Hi guys, it's Marissa here from Rise High and I'm so glad that you've tuned in today to watch this. I'm super excited because we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. The last few months have been a bit crazy, been a bit like a roller coaster, but we're super keen to now start talking about life after the coronavirus because I'm sure if you're anything like me, you're probably quite sick of hearing about the coronavirus and what we want to do is give you some hope and talk about some of the economic indicators that we're seeing at the moment and also provide you with some tips and advice to move forward to make sure that you and your family is well placed to not only succeed financially but also to achieve those financial dreams and goals that you had set for yourself. So I'm going to be here with you live for a few moments today uh, for the next sort of 10-15 minutes and happy to answer any questions live or you know send through your comments because today we're talking about life after coronavirus and how do we move forward. And I think you know it's really exciting to be talking about this because we're now in a position where Whilst the last few months have been quite scary, we're now in a position where restrictions are easing, we're slowly starting to see life return back to a new normal, and it's now time that we can start looking to the future. And I think what we've seen is that it actually hasn't been as bad as we thought it was gonna be. Both from a health perspective, you know, the number of people in Australia that got the coronavirus, the number of deaths we had were well under what was projected. And also from an economic perspective, the economic impacts that were predicted have not been as bad as we actually thought they were going to be. So there's good news on both fronts and I want to sort of explore some of those economic fronts a bit more detail moving forward. Firstly, let's start with some business confidence and just some general economic conditions. Uh, there's been a few surveys and a few indexes that have come out recently that have really highlighted the fact that things aren't as bad as we thought they were. So whilst there, yes, whilst there are some people that have lost their jobs, whilst there are some businesses that have struggled through this period, what we've seen is that businesses haven't struggled as much as we thought they would. So there was recently uh, the NAB Business Consumer Index came out and this index is about happy bosses investing and hiring staff, which is great for the economy, of course. Now, this index was very, very negative in March this year. It was down 65.2 points, but they recorded a record increase in May, where it increased by 25.5 points. So it's still negative. It's still at negative 20 points, this index. And really where we wanna see it is we wanna see it at positive, five points but the thing that we have to focus on is that it's going up quickly and we're getting closer to that neutral position which is really really good news so that's an indication that business owners and employers are gaining more confidence getting out there wanting to employ staff which is obviously what we need in australia right now so that is some good news also, we've got the NAB Business Conditions Index. So this is how employers see the current economic conditions. So this has increased as well from a negative 33.7 points in April to a negative 23.8 points in May. So once again, still negative, but a great increase towards that neutral position. So this is just further enhancing the fact that people are starting to gain confidence people are starting to see that we're over the worst of it and they're trying to start seeing the positive signs moving forward. So definitely now is really the time to support local businesses where you can, Australian businesses, local businesses. That's how we can help our businesses to get back on track because there is still a little bit of concern um, that spending is in hibernation a little bit. People are still you know, slowing down on their retail spending, people are still concerned for their own future and their own financial situation. So really what we can all do to help local businesses is help to support them and make sure that when we are buying groceries or when we are buying clothes, etc., cetera, we're, we're supporting those local businesses where we can. For some more good news, we found that most businesses in Australia have coped really well with adapting and innovating and providing technology solutions that have enabled them to continue operating to as much of, as much as they can uh, during this period where we found the Australian Bureau of Statistics has reported 70% of Australian businesses have actually been able to 
change the way they operate due to COVID-19 restrictions. And I know that that's going to actually yield benefits for them in the future because many of those businesses, including ours, uh, had to implement technology solutions that would actually enable them to continue servicing their clients uh, in the uh, isolation world that we experience. So this, I think there's, you know, yes, there are still some signs that things aren't as good as we'd like, but there are so many positive signs. There's so many good things uh, that we should really be focused on. The other good news story is unemployment. Now, unemployment rate is quite high, so we're looking at about 7.1%, but the good news is it's so much lower than we expected it to be. Uh, the ABS predicted that at this stage, unemployment rate would be about a, a higher than 11%. Now, we're only at 7%. Now, I know that the job seeker and the job keeper might be keeping that rate down for now, but the good news is that the economic conditions are nowhere near as bad as we expected them to be. So from my perspective, I see that as really positive and I see that moving forward, those signals are only going to get stronger and stronger and our economy and our conditions and our confidence is going to continue to improve. Let's turn our mind to superannuation and shares. So superannuation obviously took a huge hit, so did the share market, uh, but superannuation is starting to recover and so is the share market. We've seen a real bounce back in the share market. And you know, estimates from leading research house Super Ratings, they have uh, actually, their median balance rose by 2.7% in April. And the share markets have recovered from their bottom that they reached in March. Now, if you did take any money out of superannuation during this period, I'd really encourage you to look at a way of reinvesting that money back into super or back into another investment vehicle as soon as your financial position allows you to do that. So if you did have to take some money out to help you through the short term, perhaps when you do return to employment, when your income does resume, you could look at maybe topping up that super to offset what you've taken out so that you're not impacting your long-term future. Let's move on to property because the property markets have actually done quite well um, and they've actually been very stable through the last few months. There was worry that maybe it would have a negative impact, maybe the property market would be impacted, but what we've seen across Australia is that there has actually been a fairly stable market and property has really held its value strong, which is such great news for property investors and also people looking to get into the market because it's a symbol that you know property is a very stable asset class. So. You know, probably the record low interest rates are also helping that cause. And it is a really great time to look at buying property because we've seen the stability that property brings. And we've also seen that there are going to be some good opportunities moving forward. So whilst there has been a little bit of decline in some areas of residential property over the months of March and April, we're actually now starting to see that it's actually held pretty stable across the board in most areas and we're actually starting to see really good signs of growth where now that real estate agents are able to sell again quite easily, we're starting to see more listings, more demand, and we're gonna experience hopefully stable property, but also some good growth in the future. Now for some tips, because this is the important part. You know, I think if, if we've learned anything from the fast, past few months, it's the importance of managing our money well and making sure that we budget well. Now, when I say this, one of the most important lessons that I hope you've taken out of the past few months is the importance of paying yourself first to ensure that if something unexpected does arise in your life, you do have some emergency buffer funds available and you do have some funds available for investing in your future. The people that have really struggled through this period are people that haven't had the savings to support short-term reduction in their income. So when I say pay yourself first, it's really important to have an emergency fund and an investment fund. And with your emergency fund, it's really great if you can get that to a position where you can actually live for six months without any income so that if something did happen to you, if you did have an accident, if you know there's another pandemic, for example, and you lose your income, if something does happen, you do have some buffer funds there that can help in the case of an emergency. 
Just as important as that is, it's really important to be paying yourself first for investing in your future because no one knows what the future's got in store. But one thing's for sure is that we're going to need those assets for our future to ensure that we can have the life that we, we need and we dream of. So definitely make sure that you've got your account set up. This is a really good opportunity to rethink, reassess the way that you're spending the money, the way that you're saving your money and how you're managing your money to ensure that if a situation like this ever arises again, or any other situation for that matter which would impact your family's income, you have the ability to get through it without too much financial stress. As well as paying yourself first, it's really been a great opportunity for many to review their debts and get on top of their debts and have a debt management strategy. Now for some of you, you might have taken home loan repayment holidays or repayment deferrals with your existing home loans. Now might be a good time to start thinking about whether you need that full six months of repayment holiday or whether you're actually able to start making some small repayments towards your home loan sooner. What we're gonna find is that for those of you who did make home loan repayment negotiations with your bank, those repayment holidays are gonna to start to come up for expiry and they're gonna to have to be uh, paid off because over that repayment holiday, your loan was still actually getting charged interest, but that interest has been capitalizing onto the loan. So start planning now. Don't wait until that repayment holiday finishes. Start planning for the fact that those repayments are gonna come, those repayments are gonna return, and in some cases, for some of you, the repayments might be higher than what they were before you set the repayment holiday, depending on how your bank has treated the interest during that period. So make sure you're prepared for that. Now, if you've got any element of doubt that you can meet those repayments, or if you actually are worried that you might not be able to meet your financial obligations at that point, it's really important to take the front foot and to make sure that you're being proactive and contacting your financial provider or your lender to tell them that you need to enter a payment plan before you actually default. If you do that, you'll be able to protect your credit rating, able to protect your credit score moving forward and be able to give yourself some time and space that you need to get back on track. Overall, I just think it's really positive news moving forward in that, yes, there are some areas that we still need to improve on, but we've got so much more confidence than we had a few months ago. And there's so many positive signs that things are going to improve and get better and return to a great space in the future. So it's really important to be positive, focus on the positive elements, but also focus on what you can control, which is your own personal financial situation, your own budgeting, and making sure that you're managing your money well. Plus, make sure that you're taking advantage of some great government incentives and offers. You know, many of you out there are receiving the extra job seeker, many of you are receiving the job keeper, and now with the new announcement of the home builder grants, there's so, you know, so many incentives coming out from the government to help stimulate the economy. So if you're eligible, make sure you're taking advantage of these. And as always, the team at Rise High, we're here to help you. So we would love to discuss your financial goals and your future needs to make sure that we can be proactively supporting you to achieve those. So let's move forward. Let's look forward to a coronavirus free world where we can actually move forward and look forward to some really exciting things in the future. Thanks for tuning in today and we'll speak again soon. Bye and have a great day.